Chapter 21 You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Lan Yenran gets into a fight translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations the next day. Lan Anran and Lan Yenran went to school as usual. As soon as they arrived, they attracted a crowd of onlookers. Lan Yenran was used to it. He broke through the crowd and pulled Lan Anran towards the classroom. Because of Lan Yenran's poor grades, he was always in the ordinary class which was one floor away from Lan Anran's experimental class. Sis, go ahead. Tell me if anyone bullies you, I'll protect you. Lan Yenran felt that he was a man and had to protect the weak. Forget it. Protect yourself instead. Lan Anran rubbed his soft hair and smiled. She watched Lan Yenran walk into his classroom and turn to leave. The moment he entered the classroom, a group of girls became extremely excited. It was as though they had seen a celebrity. Lan Yenran sat down, flipped open a book and saw a love letter inside. Without reading the note, he threw it away. Dot there were a lot of snacks in his drawer, but he didn't care. He buried his head and slept. Suddenly, he heard several knocking sounds. He raised his head and asked impatiently, What? I heard that your sister is the new student in the experimental class. He was handsome and his style was a little bit cheeky. It was Lu Tian, the monitor of the ordinary class and also the best student in the class. Lu Tian was a rich second dot generation heir and came from one of the top ten wealthiest families in Rong City. There were many girls chasing him, but he wasn't interested in any of them. What are you going to do? Lan Yenran suddenly perked up. Nothing much. Does your sister have a boyfriend? She is pretty. She's just making up for the lack of numbers in the experimental class and will be eliminated soon. When the time comes, she will definitely come to our class and I'm going to chase her. What do you think, brother? In Law. Lu Tian's tone was frivolous and his words were teasing. Lan Yenran was furious and he bolted upright. B asterisk starred. If you dare to touch my sister, I will kill you. Why are you so agitated? Your sister is just a country girl. I'm just looking to play because of her looks. Lu Tian's tone wasn't kind. Lan Yenran grabbed Lu Tian by the collar, his eyes wide. I said, don't touch my sister. The girls watching were stunned. They never expected Lan Yenran to have such a domineering side. He was so cool. What? The useless brother is standing up for her. Lu Tian sneered disapprovingly. Suddenly, Lan Yenran raised a fist and smashed it hard into his face. Lu Tian was immediately beaten to the ground. He had always been arrogant and could not tolerate such an insult. He got up and retaliated. The two of them exchanged blows. Soon, someone informed the teacher. The two of them were taken to the office and Lan Anran was called over. When Lan Anran saw Lan Yenran's injuries, she became upset. What's the matter? Weren't you fine just now? Lan Anran, your brother beat me. I don't want your money. You'll have to be my girlfriend as compensation and this matter will only end when I'm sick of you. Or else, the Lan family is going to be in trouble. Backed by his family's power, Lu Tian behaved arrogantly and couldn't bear the slightest insult. Lan Anran eyed him. He looked like a rascal and had the courage to bully her brother. He was dead. Lu Tian, that you haven't been beaten enough it seems. I'm going to beat you to death. Lan Yenran's temper surged. Others could talk about him, but they couldn't talk about his sister. Come on. Enough. Lu Tian, all right. I don't know if you lack love or you're just lonely, but you'll have to pay for bullying my brother. Lan Anran threatened. Really? Bring it on, I can't wait. Looking at Lu Tian's wicked appearance, Lan Anran had an urge to slap him. Lu Tian. Lan Yenran, fighting is wrong. 
go back and write a reflection letter. Lan Yen ran, call your parents. Wang Gang, the form teacher, said solemnly. Why? Does he not have to call his parents because his family is rich, but I have to because my family is poor? Lan Yenran refused to accept it. Wang Gang enjoyed receiving gifts and his life was especially good. As a former teacher in such a school, parents would often give him presents. Hence, regardless of how badly Lu Tian did in his exams, he would always be awarded full marks and was always appointed as the class monitor. What nonsense, get out of school if you don't behave. Wang Gang was enraged. All right teacher, we will call our parents. Lan Anren looked very obedient and well dot behaved, so Wang Gang's anger dissipated. He waved his hand for them to leave. Sis, mom and dad are going to scold me, Lan Yanran said aggrievedly when they were out of the office. Don't worry, they won't. With me around, Lu Tian will pay the price. Lan Anran said confidently. No one could bully her brother. Sis, do you have a plan? Lan Yanran asked. Don't worry, Lan Anran promised. Back at home, Lan Tingyun looked at Lan Yenran's bruised face angrily. I told you not to cause trouble at school. You're usually quite well behaved, so how did you end up in a fight? Your every action represents the Lan family. Your studies are already poor and cause so much trouble. Dad, Yenran fought because of me, so don't scold him anymore. Lu Tian bullied Yenran because he is backed by his wealthy background. Tomorrow, when we go to school, he will definitely be begging for mercy and will even apologize to us. Lan Anren was very confident. Lan Tingyun had already presumed the situation. He knew the Lu family bullied others because they were rich. His father alone was horrible, so he would be busy tomorrow dealing with the incident. Sis, are you serious? Lan Yenran didn't believe it. Lu Tian was the little overlord in the class. Who would dare to provoke him? This time he took action because he couldn't take it, but now, he regretted his actions. Don't worry, I will treat your wounds. Lan Anren took out the first aid kit and gently applied ointment on Lan Anren's wounds. Back in the room, Lan Anren took out her computer. She wanted to launch an attack against the Lu family. Lu Tian had to pay. In the highest building of the Lu group, Mo Jinrong and Lu Cheng were discussing an agreement in the conference room. Boss Missouri, this contract, suddenly. The entire building blacked out, causing all computers to go dead. What's happening? Lu Cheng shouted agitatedly. Mr. Lu, it's not good. We've been hacked and now, the entire building has blacked out, Secretary Wang Tian hurriedly reported. Hacked. Where are the company's security officers? Are they all useless? Lu Cheng asked angrily. He had finally made an appointment with Mo Jinrong to talk about a deal, so this couldn't happen now. Boss, the security officer tried, but it was useless. The hacker was too fast, we couldn't keep up, Wang Tian continued. Boss Lu, let's end this discussion today. We will reschedule on a later date. M.O. San prepared to get up from his chair. No, Mr. M.O., it'll be fixed soon. You guys, fix it. Lu Tian tried his best to stop him. M.O. Jinrong followed behind with an indifferent expression. It was really a waste of time. Mr. Lu. It's not good, there is no. No money in the company account, finance rushed in and said in a hurry. What? Who? Who dares to do such a thing? Lu Qing slumped in his chair, sweating profusely. It's the international hacker Q. We can't stop him, the security officer whispered. Trash. You're all trash. As soon as he yelled, a few lines appeared on the screen of the conference room. If you want your money back, Lu Tian will go to school and apologize obediently tomorrow. In the future, if you dare to provoke anyone from the Lan family again, you just may become bankrupt, 
soon, the computers in the conference room returned to normal and the entire building lit up. M.O. Genrome looked at the large characters on the screen and frowned. Chapter 22 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Bullying will ruin the family translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations The Lawn Family Boss Missouri, you see, Lu Ching smiled, trying to encourage the signing of the contract. M.O. San glanced at M.O. Jinrong behind him. Forget it. Today isn't a lucky day, we can discuss it next time. M.O. San and M.O. Jinrong took large strides out of the conference room. Lu Cheng was furious. That rascal. He only knows how to cause trouble. Outside the building. Master Rong, International Hacker Q is a powerful person, how are they related to the Lan family? M.O. San asked. Look into it and track this person once you find their location. I need to find them, M.O. Jin Rong spoke coldly. He had another question. What connections did the Lan family have? We'll go to school and have a look tomorrow. Yes. Once Lan Anran took care of everything, she shut her computer and slept peacefully. When old Mrs. Lan heard that Lan Yenran had gotten into a fight, she couldn't help getting angry and kept asking to see Lan Yenran. Lan Anran didn't think much of it and told Lan Yenran to ignore her. With someone to depend on, he listened to his sister and didn't go. Early the next morning, Lan Tingyun and Li Yueru took Lan Yenran to school, preparing to apologize. Teacher, I'm so sorry. Yen Ran is still young and impulsive. We're here today to apologize to Lu Tian, Lan Tingyun said sincerely. When Wang Gang saw that Lan Tingyun didn't bring anything, he felt that there was no sincerity at all, so he simply sighed and left the two of them to the side. Teacher, why isn't Lu Tian here yet? Li Yueru asked. I'm coming, an urgent voice came from behind. When Lan Tingyun turned her head, Lu Cheng hurried over, his big dot wasted belly and mouth were I dot catching. Lan Yen Ran looked at Lu Tian. He seemed more seriously injured than yesterday. How did your injuries worsen? That isn't my fault, I didn't touch you, Lan Yen Ran clarified. Just as Li Yueru was about to speak, Lu Cheng interrupted, I'm really sorry for my son beating him yesterday, it's all our fault. We didn't teach our son well, I've spoiled him. I hope you will forgive him. This is just a small gift to compensate your child. Take him to see the doctor. I'm really very sorry. Lu Tian apologized by stuffing a red envelope that was thicker than toilet paper into Lan Tingyun's hand. Lan Tingyun was dumbfounded. Everyone in Rome City knew how arrogant the Lu family was and they have never admitted their mistakes. What was happening? Wang Gang was startled as he looked enviously at the stack of banknotes. Mr. Lu, dot Lan Yenran beat your child. Did you make a mistake? Yes, that's right. I've clarified with him and he is the one that started the fight. It's all my fault. Yenran, don't be angry. In the future, you will be the boss in the class and everyone will listen to you. Yenran's parents can't blame a child, I didn't teach him well. I'm here to apologize. Hurry and apologize. Lu Ching nudged Lu Tian. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have talked about your sister. Lan Anran and Lan Yenran, I'm sorry, Lu Tian lowered his bruised face and apologized. Lan Yenran was confused. Was this the same Lu Tian? He nodded blankly and accepted the apology. Lan Anran smiled with satisfaction. Those who bully Lan Yenran will have to pay. Chapter 23 You are listening at NovelFull.audio I'll send the challenge next time translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations, it's alright, it's alright. This is common amongst children. Yen Ran is still young, Lu Tian, don't blame him. Lan Tingyun waved his hand in shock. He wouldn't blame him, he wouldn't dare. In the future, he isn't allowed to bully Yen Ran again, isn't that right? Lu Ching scolded. 
Yes, Dad, Lu Tian replied with his bruised face. Wang Gang was a little disappointed that the matter was resolved so smoothly and this time, Lu Tian didn't give him anything. Instead, he had gifted something to Lan Tingyun. What was going on? Since the matter is resolved, let's go back to our classes. He glanced at the red envelope in Lan Tingyun's hand with an envious look. After leaving the classroom, Lu Qing bowed his head and said to Lan Tingyun, Brother Lan, you know that it wasn't easy for me to start a company alone. I know I'm usually arrogant, but I will definitely change and I will educate my son well. Please forgive me. Lan Tingyun looked at Li Yueru in confusion, which turned to a smile. Boss Lu, what are you saying? Don't worry, we may even cooperate in the future and when the time comes, we will have to rely on you. It's normal for children to fight, don't take it to heart. Great, we will move on then. Brother Lan, thank you for your graciousness. I'll go back and wait for any news. Lu Tian hurried off. What's wrong with him? Li Yueru asked. Lan Tingyun shook his head and turned to leave. The moment Mo Jinrong and Mo San reached the school and heard that the matter had been resolved, they were even more puzzled. What exactly was the relationship between international hacker Q and the Lan family? Was Q hiding in the Lan family? Mo Jinrong went directly towards Lan Anren's experimental class, attracting looks along the way. Master Rong, the students are looking at us like animals in the zoo. It's making me nervous. Mo San could feel countless pairs of eyes staring at them and was uncomfortable. Shut up. Mo Jinrong looked straight ahead and arrived at the experimental class. Through the window, he could see Lan Anren sitting in the classroom, listening to Zhao Xiaowei. Anren, news of Lu Tian apologizing to your brother has spread throughout the entire school. What happened? Lu Tian is a bigger tyrant than Lin Cheng, how could he be willing to apologize to your brother? Even I am in shock, Zhao Xiaolei probed. With Lu Cheng as a backing, Lu Tian was always up to no good, bullying female students. Even the teachers didn't dare to discipline him. So why did he actually take the initiative to apologize to Lan Yanran? It was a surprise to all. Who knows, perhaps he found his conscience, Lan Anren said casually. Lan Anren, I want to challenge you again. Sun Hui walked over. She couldn't accept her previous defeat, purely because of Lan Anren's luck and this time, she had to win back her pride. What do you want to challenge me with this time? Lan Anren asked disdainfully. The pharmacy competition is next week. Participate in that and we will compete. If you lose, you will leave the experimental class. This competition was a battle of ability, held in Rome City annually, and all experts would participate. The champion would be generously rewarded. Sun Hui figured she would definitely surpass Lan Anren. Dot Lan Anren smiled. If you lose, you'll clean all the toilets on this floor. How is that? Deal. Sun Hui agreed without thinking. She thought that Lan Anren didn't know anything, so how could she win in just a short week? This time, she would defeat this arrogant person. Lan Anren, you are overestimating yourself. Sun Hui is the best student in our class, don't accept the challenge just because of pride, you will end up being embarrassed. Why don't you just admit defeat and leave the experimental class? It will be better for everyone. Lin Cheng hated pretentious people. Lan Anren was just a countryside girl and yet, she was acting like an expert. What an arrogant girl. That's not true. Lin Cheng, stop looking down on others. Anren can do it. Zhao Xiaolei looked at Lan Anren. Zhao Xiaolei was a little guilty, but somehow, she believed in Lan Anren and had a feeling she would be able to do it. Lan Anren didn't speak, she just smiled. Zhao Xiaolei inadvertently glanced at the door and saw a handsome man looking in their direction. She thought he was looking at her and flushed. The man wasn't dressed well but he was very good dot looking. Did he have a crush on her? 
Anren, there's a man watching me at the door. How annoying. Zhao Xiaolei covered her face, feeling embarrassed. Lan Anren glanced over towards the door, her eyes widening. Is that Emo Jinron? What is he doing here? Emo Jinron waved, signaling for her to come over. Xiaolei, I'm going to the washroom, I'll be back soon. Lan Anren walked out of the classroom and looked at Emo Jinron. What are you doing here? Emo Jinron looked forward, his voice icy cold. The young master is looking for you. Emo San stood upright at the side with an arrogant expression. Those who didn't know would think he was Emo Jinron. Oh. Lan Anren walked over. What do you want? I heard that the Lu group was hacked and all their assets were wiped out. The condition was that they had to apologize to the Lan family today. Do you know anything about that? Mo San asked outright. I don't know. You're here to ask about that. Lan Anren had an innocent and blank expression. I, is this him? Hi, I am Lan Yashin, Anren's sister. Mo San was in the midst of a sentence when Lan Yashin interrupted. They examined each other and both felt that the other party was hideous. Seems like the rumors are true, Mo Jinron can't compare to his butler. He really is old and ugly. It's a waste of Lan Anren's face. Lan Yashin sneered internally. Mo San eyed her, thinking how she couldn't compare to Lan Anren at all. He was strangely displeased. Miss Lan, don't forget about tomorrow, Mo San reminded and left, ignoring Lan Yashin. Lan Yashin was bored. This guy was old, ugly, and didn't have any manners. Other than his money, he was just a brute, a perfect match for Lan Anren. Chapter 24 You are listening at NovelFull.audio M.O. Jinrong T's Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations, Sis, why was he here today? Did he miss you? Lan Yashin smiled brightly, pulling Lan Anren's hand as though they were real sisters. Be no calm, does it have anything to do with you? Lan Anren retracted her arm and replied disdainfully. Master Rong, do you think Q is from the Lan family? Lan Anren is just a countryside girl, she probably isn't related to an international hacker. She didn't seem to know anything, Mo San said softly. It's not her, but there are definitely members of the Lan family that must know. Investigate every single member of the Lan family. I want a detailed report. Just then, Mo Jinron noticed someone following behind them. Disperse, someone is following us. Mo Jinron reacted quickly, separating from Mo San. He thought that the stalker was going for Mo San, but she didn't seem to give up. It was as if she knew he was Mo Jinron. Mo Jinron hid in a corner and waited for the stalker. The steps got closer and suddenly. Mo Jinron reached out swiftly and pushed the person against the wall in a throat hold. Why are you following me? He glanced down, using his cap to shield his face. It's me, let go. Lan Anren slapped his arm vigorously, her small white face flushed from suffocation. It's you. Why are you following me? Mo Jinron glanced up and released his arm. Because I like you, Lan Anren replied in a coquettish tone, hugging Mo Jinron's arm. Mo Jinron was startled. What's wrong with her? Let go. I'm the Mo family's butler. Young master has left. Go find him. He pushed her aside coldly. I'm not going. I like you. Mo Jinron is old and ugly. He isn't as fresh and tender as you are. Quick. Give me a kiss. Lan Anren said teasingly as her slender and fair fingers ran across Mo Jinrong's cheek. Miss Lan, please have some self. Respect. I am the butler of the Mo family and you are about to marry into the Mo family. You must pay attention to your every word and action in the future. Young master wouldn't be happy if he knew about this. It had been a long time since Mo Jinrong said so much in one breath. 
But I like you, you are handsome while Emo Jinrong is so ugly. If you are willing, in the future, we can, Lon Anren continued to tease Emo Jinrong, but before she could finish her sentence, Emo Jinrong pushed her aside again, moving far away from her. Outrageous. You. You stay away from me. You are engaged to young master Emo Miss Lon, is this the kind of person you are? Mo Jinrong found it unbelievable. On the surface, she was such a refined young lady. How did she become such a person behind closed walls? It had been a long time since he was near a woman and his heart started to hurt again. He was trying to push through the discomfort, not wanting her to notice anything. Butler, Missouri, I'm engaged to Mo Jinrong, but you should know that everyone likes pretty things. Just accept me, Lon Anren continued to tease him. Her actions were seen by Lan Yashin, who was on the way to the toilet. She hid in the corner, listening to everything. Lan Anren, you're dead. You really are a vixen, hooking up with a butler when you're about to marry that hideous monster. If grandma finds out, you'll be dead, she whispered to herself. Thinking she had dirt over Lan Anren, Lan Yashin was ecstatic. This country girl turned out to be a vixen. Lon Anren is going to embarrass the Lon family. Let's see if you can still put on a front while Grandma scolds you. Sis, what are you doing here? You and the butler, the two of you. Lon Yashin suddenly appeared, her bright eyes staring straight at Lon Anren's hand. Mo Jinrong started to panic. His face was pale and his lips were purple, the chest pain was too much and he slumped into Anren's arm. Lan Yashin was overjoyed to see this, the butler from the M.O. family lying in Anren's arms. They were behaving so improperly in public. Crap. Lan Anren was so absorbed in her teasing, she forgot about M.O. Jinrong's condition. Sis, don't worry, I won't say anything as long as, Lan Yashin was just about to threaten her, but before she could finish her sentence, Lan Anren helped M.O. Jinrong up and turned to leave. I have something urgent to attend to, we can talk again later. Lan Yashin was furious. She was left alone pouting, looking displeased. Lan Anren, if you dare to disobey me, I'll tell grandma about this. She turned to leave. Lan Anren didn't have a choice, she could only bring Mo Jinrong to an empty classroom. She knew that his chest pain was her fault. How could she have forgotten that he couldn't touch women? Lan Anren was about to treat Mo Jinrong when he suddenly awakened, using the last of his strength, he said weakly, hurry. Hurry and call. F asterisk CK that. Saving your life is more important. In her past life, she knew how serious his condition was. He had sought help from some famous doctors all over the world, but they were all useless. The hospitals couldn't find any problem so he could only see a psychologist and in the end, he died in her hands. Lon Anren wasn't going to let that happen again. She took out a jade pendant, her secret weapon. She opened the jade and there were spices inside. It was her secret recipe. They had a calming effect that could enter one's subconscious. Chapter 25 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Heal Him Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations Lan Anren ignited the spices and a sweet scent pierced through their senses. She placed the ignited spices near Mo Jinrong's nose and shut her eyes. She entered Mo Jinrong's subconsciousness. They were on a plane and the young Mo Jinrong was chatting happily with a young girl. Mo Jinrong stood up to go to the washroom while the young girl stayed in her seat. Suddenly she started to convulse all over, her eyes tightly fixed in Mo Jinrong's direction, one little hand stretched out while another clenched her chest. She looked tortured and eventually stopped moving. What happened? Lan Anren frowned. Just then, Mo Jinrong returned and saw his sister, her lips purple and face pale. He hugged her and wailed loudly. Inger. Inger. Mo Jinrong's condition wasn't stable and Lan Anren hurriedly left his subconscious. She was a little shocked. In her past life, she knew of his illness, 
but she never cared about him and didn't know he had such a past. Lon Anren took out a gray pill and gave it to M. O. Jinro. This was a tranquilizer she prepared for severely ill patients that could relieve heart palpitations and tension, but couldn't solve the root problem. She would need to create a specialized pill for M. O. Jinro as his symptoms were severe and may even take his life. After M. O. Jinro took the pill, his frown eased. Seeing M. O. Jinro's condition improve, Lon Anren helped him to the school gate and took a taxi to the hospital. A strong smell of disinfectant surrounded the tip of M. O. Jinro's nose. He lifted his eyelids slightly and looked around in a blur. Where am I? Young Master M. O., are you awake? We're in the hospital, Miss Lon sent you here. Why was your angina suddenly triggered? M. O. San asked worriedly as he stepped forward to help M. O. Jinro. Lon Anren brought me here. M. O. Jinro struggled to sit upright. He wasn't sure why he felt so energized, this wasn't how he felt in the past after an attack like this. MMH, Miss Lon said you were suddenly ill and brought you over. How do you feel? M. O. San asked. Stand, what medicine did the doctors use? M. O. Jean Rong asked agitatedly. They didn't use anything special, just normal saline. M. O. San looked at M. O. Jean Rong, who seemed to be very energetic and in a better condition than before. Dot M. O. Jean Rong frowned again. Strange, how could it be? Young Master M. O., what happened? Why was your angina suddenly triggered? It's been a long time since that has happened. M. O. San was perplexed. The last time his angina was triggered was ten years ago when a babysitter accidentally touched him. Back then, M. O. Jean Rong almost died, but this time, he seemed quite energetic. Was he energized because of his marriage? M. O. Jean Rong was enraged when he thought about Lon Anren's words and actions. When has he allowed someone else to tease him? Moreover, he couldn't even move. It was so frustrating. It's all right. Let's go, I don't like the smell of hospitals. Seeing that the drip was almost gone, M. O. Jean Rong stood up. But M. O. Changwen heard that you were ill, and insisted on coming to see you. He is probably already on the road, M. O. San said. How did he find out? M. O. Jean Rong turned and asked. Tan Wen might have mentioned it when he saw you were brought in, M. O. San replied respectfully. Tan Wen was M. O. Changwen's personal butler, who liked to complain about everything. He would have mentioned something as big as M. O. Jean Rong's illness. He's here to see me. He probably wants to see if I'm dead. Forget about him, let's go. M. O. Jean Rong called for someone to pull out the needle and strode out of the hospital. As there was no class in the afternoon, Lon Anren went home after sending M. O. Jean Rong to the hospital. The moment she stepped into the house, she saw Lon Yashin sitting in the hall, waiting for her. Sis, you're finally home. It took you so long to come back. Were you with the butler? Lon Yashin glanced around, wanting the details. What's that got to do with you? What are you doing here? Lon Anren asked angrily. She was annoyed just by looking at her. Sis, I didn't mean anything, I'm just reminding you to be careful since you're going to be married into the M.O. family. If your relationship with the butler isn't innocent, it would embarrass the Lon family. I definitely wouldn't say anything, but people talk. You should be more careful, Grandma would be furious if she found out, Lon Yashin said unhurriedly. What are you saying? you gossiper. Who doesn't have innocent friendships? If you continue to talk rubbish, I'm going to rip your tongue out. Lan Yenran had sharp ears, which could hear the slightest rustle. Yenran, you probably didn't know, but M. O. Jean Rome came to our school today. He must have missed a certain someone. What I mean is that I saw that they were displaying their affections publicly, Lan Yashin smiled, looking straight at Lan Anran. What does it have to do with you, B asterisk TCH? Lan Yenran didn't like to talk outside, but he wasn't going to be bullied in his own home. B asterisk TCH. Watch out for your long nose. 
Lan Yenran pinched his nose as he said this. Yenran, what are you saying over there? Li Yueru scolded as she walked over. Chapter 26 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Secret Manual Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations, Yashin, don't blame him, he's just a child. It's good that you are here, I forgot to give grandma the things that the M.O. family sent last time. Here is some ginseng and a bird's nest, you can bring them to grandma. Li Yueru gave two boxes of valuable items to Lan Yashin. It's okay, second aunt, grandma will definitely be happy. Lan Yashin received it with a smile. Mom, I'm tired, I'll go back and rest first. Lan Anren smiled. Li Yueru nodded. Lan Yashin carried the items towards Lan Anren and said softly, Sis, believe me, I won't say anything. Think about the experimental class. If someone exposed this, you wouldn't be able to stay any longer, so it's better if you just leave now. I'm thinking for your sake, or else, Grandma will scold you if she finds out. It seemed like she was protecting Lan Anren, but in reality, she meant that she would tell Grandma if Anren tried to remain in the experimental class. You're threatening me. It's all right, do as you please, Lan Anren said calmly, her lips lifting slightly. Lan Yashin was furious and she struggled to maintain a smile. Second aunt, I'm going back. Bye. She turned and the smile was gone, leaving an icy cold expression. Lan Anren returned to her room and took out her computer. She returned the Luf Miley's funds and turned to the black market to look for news of Fennel. The Lan family villa. Grandma, I'm here. These are the gifts from second aunt. She said they couldn't finish eating the dowry from the M.O. family and tasked me with bringing some back for you, Lan Yashin said happily. That unfilial thing. Who does she think this is, sending trash to me that she can't finish? She has no manners. How did I accept such a daughter? In law? Zhao Xiumei took it over and looked at it, her eyes full of disgust. Lan Yashin put the things on the ground and walked over to massage Zhao Xiumei's shoulders. She spoke in a flattering voice, Grandma, don't be angry. It wouldn't be good for your health to suffer. These are good things, the M.O. family wouldn't have sent any junk. The M.O. family would only send good gifts. I have plenty of these things. Tell me, how was Yenron's incident resolved? Did he apologize? Zhao Xiumei didn't need to think, she knew the type of people in the Lu family, and her soft dot hearted second son would definitely bow down and apologize. They were a whole family of embarrassments. It seemed to have resolved peacefully. I heard they were even given a big envelope. Lan Yashin didn't explain the entire story causing Zhao Xiumei to misunderstand. She figured they apologized and even gave them money, those useless people. That useless family, how did I give birth to such a pitiful thing? Zhao Xiumei had a regretful expression. Grandma, let me say something, but don't be angry. Lan Yashin pressed against Zhao Xiumei's face. Tell me. Why would grandma be angry at you? Mom and dad are busy every day, only you treat me the best. I know that the Lan family's name is extremely important and I have always wanted to bring us honor, but today, I was really furious, Lan Yashin said softly. What is it? Who made you angry? Tell me and I'll stand up for you. Zhao Xiumei grew upset. It's Anren. I saw M.O. Jinrong at our school today and after he left, she started to hook up with the M.O. family's butler. They were touching each other and she said that she really liked him. I have always been fighting for the Lan family's honor, but she didn't care about the family at all. There were so many people in school, but she was behaving intimately with the butler. I couldn't bear to watch. Lan Yashin lowered her head like a kid who did something wrong, pretending to feel shame for the Lan family. What? That brat did something so shameful. Atrocious. What a sin. Isn't she shaming the family's name? I will be humiliated if word spreads to the M.O. family. 
Zhao Xiumei decided to visit Lan Tingyun's house to talk about it. Grandma, you said you wouldn't be angry. I am not complaining, I promised her I wouldn't say anything, she didn't mean it after all. I have also seen Mo Jinrong, he is extremely ugly while his butler is very handsome. Sis must have been confused, don't blame her. If you go, she will definitely know that I said something and I'll be in trouble. She will definitely blame me for it, Lan Yashin said with a horrified expression. She wouldn't dare. I'm her elder, if I say she's wrong, does she dare to not admit it? Don't worry, Grandma knows that you are doing this for the Lan family's sake. It's not a complaint, you are a good girl. I'm going to teach that insolent girl a lesson. Zhao Xiumei slammed the table and said angrily. Grandma, it's too late now, let's talk about it tomorrow. Hurry and teach me how to make medicine so that I can bring us honor during the pharmacy competition. I will not bring shame to the Lan family, Lan Yashin promised solemnly. What a sensible child. Come, Grandma has a lot of unique skills that you can use. Zhao Xiumei caressed her head, brought her to the study room, and took out a tattered notebook. Chapter 27 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Grandma is here translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations, Grandma, what is it? Lan Yashin asked curiously. These are the notes me and your grandpa accumulated over the years. Your grandpa has always wanted to be a Chinese medicine practitioner, so he researched many Chinese medicine formulas that are all inside this notebook. You can have a look. Zhao Xiumei handed the tattered notebook over with a doting expression. Old Mr. Lan spent his whole life researching the properties of Chinese medicine formulas and had recorded most of his efforts in these notes, hoping that the future generations could inherit his mantle. In Zhao Xiumei's view, Lan Yashin was suitable. Thank you Grandma, I will definitely work hard, Lan Yashin took the notebook and said obediently. With this secret manual, she wouldn't be worried about that brat. It was Saturday and Lan Anren was about to head out to register her marriage with Mo Jinrong when old Mrs. Lan and Lan Yashin came over. One of them had a hostile expression while the other had a hypocritical smile, looking at Lan Tingyun with an innocent expression. Mom. Why are you here so early in the morning? If you'd called for us, we would have come over. Lan Tingyun seemed particularly surprised. His mother had never been here on a weekend, so why was she here so early today? If I hadn't come, I don't know what other shameful things would have happened to this family. There was meaning behind her words. Lan Tingyun and Li Yueru looked at old Mrs. Lan in confusion. Grandma, Tell us if you have something to say, I have to go out. Lan Anren didn't need to think. Lan Yashin must have complained again, but she didn't have a guilty conscience, so she spoke righteously. What are you going to do behind our backs so early in the morning? Old Mrs. Lan eyed her unkindly. She was dressed beautifully today, definitely out to have an affair. That brat. Grandma, you're speaking as though I can escape from your eagle eyes. Tell us if you have something, if not, I'm leaving, Lan Anren said unceremoniously. Insolent. You don't respect me at all. You want to leave before I'm even done talking. These countryside children have no manners. Zhao Xiumei suddenly slammed the table, startling everyone. Mom, calm down. Why are you here today? Lan Tingyun handed over a glass of premium Longjing tea. Ask your daughter about the foolish things she did. The Lan family may not be a scholarly family, but we are an influential family in Rong City. We care about reputation. The shameful things your daughter is doing is embarrassing me. If I don't step in and the M.O. family finds out, how am I going to face them? Zhao Xiumei lashed out at Lan Anren furiously, but Lan Anren only felt her ear itch and hadn't taken it to heart. Mom, what shameful things did Anren do? Li Yueru couldn't bear such insults. Her daughter was the most obedient and sensible child. How did she end up being called a lousy person? Ask her yourself, she was behaving intimately with the M.O. family butler. 
It would be humiliating if word of this spreads. She was even seen by others. Such an embarrassment, Zhao Xiumei patted her sallow face and said with disgust. She was a prideful woman and if something like this blew up, her usual bragging wouldn't hold true. Lan Yueru turned to Lan Anren with a serious expression. Anren, tell me honestly, is that true? Lan Anren smiled lightly and replied softly, it must be someone that doesn't like me that made such accusations. I was with Emo Jinrong yesterday, how could they have seen the butler? What? Are you saying I accused you? Zhao Xiumei glared at her. That wasn't what Yashin said yesterday and she believed that her favorite granddaughter wouldn't lie. Lan Anren was surely at fault. Besides, she wouldn't just admit to having an affair. As expected from someone from the countryside, a liar and vixen at such a young age. Mom, you must be mistaken. Who did you hear this from? I dare to swear that Anren wouldn't do such a thing. Lan Tingyun chose to trust his daughter after some thought. Even though she lived in the countryside, she was knowledgeable and wouldn't do such vulgar things. Mom, Tingyun is right, you must be mistaken. Anren is a good child, she wouldn't, the moment Li Yueru finished speaking, Zhao Xiumei bolted upright, glaring at them. A whole family of ingrates. Would I accuse a junior? You don't even believe what I say. This is outrageous. Ever since this insolent girl came back, you are all obsessed. She is indeed wicked. Zhao Xiumei trembled with anger, the finger she pointed at Lan Anren shaking uncontrollably. Grandma, I really don't know what you're saying, I didn't do anything. That person must have been mistaken. Grandma, you would rather believe someone else than me. You must really hate that I'm from the countryside. Since you are determined to accuse me, I have nothing more to say. Anren lowered her head, big droplets falling from her eyes, looking pitiful. Chapter 28 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Married Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations, Grandma, don't accuse her. Lan Yanran felt the injustice and stood up for his sister. How can a virtuous person like his sister be wronged? Rascal! Shut up! This has nothing to do with you. Your studies are horrible and yet you're able to retort so quickly. You're an embarrassment. Zhao Xiumei scolded unceremoniously. This country girl sure could act. Watching Lan Anren's performance, Lan Yashin felt extremely frustrated and she pretended to be a peacemaker. Grandma, don't be angry. It might be a misunderstanding and she didn't do it deliberately. Lan Tingyun. Aren't you listening to me? We can't embarrass the Lan family. Lan Anren, if the M.O. family learns about your affair with the butler, I'll rip your skin apart. Just then, an elegant voice came from outside, what can't the M.O. family know? M.O. Jean Rong strode in. Master Rong, why are you here? Lan Tingyun hurriedly came forward to greet him. When Zhao Xiumei heard that it was M.O. Jean Rong, she smiled, and her face crinkled. Mr. M.O. is here. M.O. San sat directly on the chair, it seemed like he was looking for trouble. Didn't we arrange to get the marriage license today? Miss Lan, you can tell us if you aren't willing. No, why would she be unwilling? Zhao Xiumei couldn't allow her to refuse the wedding. She looked at M.O. Jinrong's hideous appearance and was worried Yashin would end up bearing the consequences if the marriage was refused. She turned to look at Lan Anren, her gaze heavy with threat, warning her to behave. Our master Rong. I don't wait for anyone. Miss Lan was extremely arrogant today. M.O. San almost slipped, but fortunately, he reacted swiftly and pretended to be displeased. I'm sorry, I was caught up with something. Lan Anren smiled. What's more important than getting the marriage license? M.O. San's small eyes glanced towards Xiao Xiumei, as he asked domineeringly. Marriage license. Zhao Xiumei and Lan Yashin were both startled. It's nothing, since you have something going on, I'll make my leave. 
she had wanted to give her a scolding. That insolent girl didn't tell her she had such an important thing to do today. She looked at Emo Jinrong's face and decided that it was better that he hadn't made his appearance public, it would save the Lan family from embarrassment. Zhao Xiumei stood up and Lan Tingyun hurried over to help her. Mom, slow down and don't talk about such things again, Lan Tingyun reminded her softly. Zhao Xiumei was still unconvinced. She looked at the butler, who was handsome and had an extraordinary temperament. He didn't look like a butler at all, but seemed more like the young master. But knowing that he was Lan Anren's lover, she didn't like him at all. Humph, don't let me catch you, Zhao Xiumei huffed. After sending off old Mrs. Lan, Lan Tingyun hurriedly came over to apologize. Mr. Mo, I'm sorry, Anren didn't mean it. It's all right. I won't have much time after today, so let's go to the Civil Affairs Bureau now. Mo San aggressively stood up from his chair and strode out. Lan Anren was curious whether she would be marrying Mo Jinrong or Mo San and what excuse he would give. After the three of them left, Lan Yenran lowered his head and asked softly, Mom, Dad, is Sis really going to marry that hideous monster? Lan Tingyun looked anguished. Your sister is very sensible as she didn't make things difficult for me and your mom. I've let down my good daughter. The thought made Li Yueru tear up and the whole family was in low spirits. When the three of them arrived at the Civil Affairs Bureau, Mo San became worried and he eyed Mo Jinro. Was he really going to marry Miss Lan? Would Master Rong kill him? Miss Lan, Master Rong's identity can't be exposed, let me register the marriage on his behalf, Mo Jinro said. He would be replacing himself. Lan Anren almost burst into laughter, she didn't expect such an excuse. You said that it isn't convenient to make the marriage public. Is that because Master Rong has some embarrassing illness which makes a marriage inconvenient? Lan Anren asked deliberately. Nonsense. Master Rong. I'm in good health, what health issues could I have? Mo San didn't know if he was referring to himself or Mo Jin Rong, but he was infuriated by the way Lan Anren was looking at him. All right, then I'll get the marriage license with Butler, Missouri. Lan Anren wanted to touch Mo Jinrong, but was suddenly reminded of his condition and decided against it. She didn't want a joyous occasion to be ruined. Mo San was shocked. She accepted it just like that. Ordinary people would oppose or reject the idea, but she really wasn't an ordinary person. This was nothing to Lan Anren. All she needed was the identity as the M.O. family's young lady, so she just needed to marry someone from the M.O. family. The registration was quick. After M.O. Jinrong obtained the marriage license, he tossed it to M.O. San without a single glance. Lan Anren was just about to take a look when M.O. Jinrong snatched it over and tossed it to M.O. San. He couldn't let her see the name on the marriage license. The M.O. family will take care of the marriage license. Mo Jinrong took large strides forward without turning back. Hubby, where are you going? Lan Anren chased after him and called out coquettishly. Cough, cough. Young Master Mo is your husband, I'm just the butler. Let me remind you, please behave yourself in public, Mo Jinrong placed his hand on his nose and said awkwardly. Mo San was dumbfounded. Is this how Lan Anren really was? Cough, cough. Miss Lan, even though we are married, you should pay attention to your identity, your words and actions, and prioritize what's important. I'll let this go for today, he said after coming back to his senses. Chapter 29 You are listening at NovelFull.audio You think I've lived too long. Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations, oh, all right. I understand. I will be better moving forward. Hubby, don't be angry. Lan Anren looked at Mo Jinro. Forget it, go home, Mo San said innocently. Mo Jinro followed behind, not knowing what to say. Lan Anren snickered in the back. In her past life, she didn't know Mo Jinro had such a cute side. 
In the car, M.O. Jean Rome glanced out the window quietly, his mind full of images of zero. Gnav O.M. no one could cure his illness, but yesterday, he was suddenly better. Based on past experiences, he would have had to be hospitalized for at least half a month. Master Rong, what kind of person do you think Miss Lon is? M.O. San was a little curious about Lon Anren. She wasn't like the others he'd met before, she was mysterious and seemed to have two sides. She's just a countryside girl that doesn't have manners. Is there news of international hacker Q yet? M.O. Jean Rong asked. Oh, news of Q is extremely secretive, second in the world. Her tracks are mysterious and unpredictable and it isn't easy to trace her. Why don't you ask Master Zay for help? You know his abilities, he might be able to find information, M.O. San suggested as he drove. M.M.H., what about news about the Lawn family? M.O. Jean Rong asked coldly. I've investigated every member in the Lawn family and found details of the others. There isn't anything special, only that Miss Lan's background is a little simple. It's probably because she was sent to the countryside so it's reasonable that her background is a little simple. M.O. San didn't think much about it, a countryside girl wouldn't have such great abilities. M.O. Jean Rong didn't say anything, looking out the window in silence. Suddenly, his phone rang and M.O. Chanwen's name appeared. He pressed his phone to his ear. Hello. An urgent voice called out, Jean Rong, I heard that you were admitted to the hospital yesterday, but you had left by the time I arrived. Later, I was busy and forgot to call. How is your health? Are you okay? I'm fine, M.O. Jean Rong replied in a low voice. Good, good. In the past, your flare-ups were frightening, how did you recover so quickly this time? M.O. Changwen asked curiously. In the past, every time M.O. Jin Rong fell ill, he couldn't wait to watch him die, but his wishes were never fulfilled. This time, he recovered so quickly, which was quite unbelievable. Second uncle, are you saying that I've lived too long? M.O. Jin Rong asked coldly. Look at what you're saying, don't you know that I'm concerned about you? Your mom just heard about it and was nagging that you hadn't said a word. Hurry home, she is worried to death. M.O. Changwen spoke anxiously and to others, he would seem to be extremely worried. Okay, he replied impatiently and hung up. He didn't believe that M.O. Changwen would care about him. His worry was purely because of the M.O. family's assets. He just wanted to see how long he could live. Master Rong, are we going home? M.O. San asked. M.M.H., let's go back. M.O. Jean Rong leaned his head against the chair, his slender fingers massaging his temples, looking exhausted. After registering the marriage, Lon Anren returned to the countryside to care for her herb garden and to take some medicine for her mother. Suddenly, she received a text. There's news of the items you want, come to the black market at 1 a.m. There was news about the reward announcement she had issued. She was happy, knowing there was finally a cure to her mom's illness. She held her phone, her long slender fingers tapping a reply. 1 a.m., bring him to the black market. Great. Lon Anren closed her phone and kept the medicine in her bag. She would make some herbal soup for her mother when she was back. Anren, you registered your marriage with M.O. Jean Rong today. Li Yueru drank a mouthful of soup. MMH, Mom, don't worry. I made a promise with M.O. Jean Rong and I can still stay at home. Lon Anren smiled, two deep dimples appearing on her cheeks, her eyes big and gentle. The more she behaved in such a manner, the more guilty Li Yueru felt. Her health had deteriorated and her complexion was haggard. Sis, Mom vomited blood again today. Before Lan Yen Ran could finish speaking, Li Yueru nudged him, signaling for him to keep quiet. Nonsense, that didn't happen. Anren, don't worry, it's just an old ailment, it isn't serious, Li Yueru comforted her, worried that Lan Anren would be upset. Lan Anren was shocked, her eyes felt sore and tears streamed down her face. In her past life, she had let her mother down. 
This time, her mother was seriously ill because of her. She really was unfilial. Mom, don't worry, I will heal you. Lan Anren made a silent vow, she would get the herb today. After Li Yueru took her medicine, her face looked relieved and she fell into a deep sleep. Lan Tingyun was busy at the hospital and couldn't come back for dinner, which left the two children. Sis, the pharmacy competition is about to start, but I don't have any suitable medicine. I will be an embarrassment again, Lan Yenran couldn't seem to swallow his food as the stress was overwhelming. Don't worry, we will definitely win the competition, Lan Anran replied easily. Chapter 30 You are listening at NovelFull.audio News from Ghost City Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations, Sis, don't exaggerate. I know that you're just comforting me. It's the same every year and I don't want to participate anymore. I want to act, but Dad doesn't agree because he thinks that it isn't proper work. Last year I attended the pharmacy competition and I received the participation award. Do you know what that was? It was a towel. Grandma scolded me so badly when I got home, she said that I was retarded. I don't want to participate anymore, Lan Yenran said with a tortured expression. Lan Anran was heartbroken. She caressed Lan Yenran's small head and remembered that in her past life, her brother had sold himself to an old and ugly rich woman for her sake. It was to help her raise money and in the end, he died by the woman's hand. Lan Anran could help tearing up at the thought. She turned her head to wipe the tears and smiled. Dut, don't worry, after the pharmacy competition, I'll tell Dad not to force you to stay in medical school. I will help you get transferred to the performing arts department. Really? Lan Yenran's eyes lit up and were instantly energized. When have I lied to you? Lan Anran smiled sincerely. Sis, you really are the best sister in the world. Lan Yenran put down his utensils and hugged her happily. All right, let's eat. Lan Anran smiled. Lan Yenran held his utensils happily. He never knew a meal at home could be this fragrant. After the meal, Yen Ran went to sleep obediently while Lan Anran kept looking at her watch. The black market was far from the house, so she would have to leave early. In order to ensure her family didn't notice anything, she would only leave after her father returned home. At 12 a.m., Lan Anran set off. Night enveloped Rome City and a black figure shuttled through the lonely streets. The black market was located on the outskirts of Rome City. It was only open on Saturday and it sold a dazzling array of things that were prohibited, hence why it was called the Ghost City. The rule of the Ghost City was to leave after the transaction. Usually, the people who purchased things wouldn't ask about the origins of the products. The deal would proceed as long as there was money. There weren't any police or anyone managing the city, and the things sold were all rarely seen on the market. Prices increased when supply was low, so the prices in Ghost City were usually very high. Lan Anran wore night clothes and a cap, walking along the path to the vicinity of the Ghost City, where a group of people were waiting for Lan Anran. How is it? Is the information accurate? Lan Anran asked first. Don't worry, this was insider news. The buyer is old ghost and there isn't anything he doesn't know. He has never failed us, a burly man reassured her. MMH, let's go. Lon Anran took the lead and walked into the room. There were many people in the ghost city today. All of them were masked, not willing to let others see their real appearance. Lon Anran and a group of people went straight to a small hut that was lit only by candles. There was an old man in the hut. His beard was white, he wore a hat, and his skin was yellow under the candlelight. Young lady, you want news about fennel, the old man asked in a deep voice. MMH, I need some, Lan Anran answered. Everyone that comes here needs it. You know the rules. The old man stretched out his hand. Lan Anran naturally understood. She took out a bag with a wad of cash and offered it all with a smile. Can you tell me now? 
The old man looked at the heavy bag of cash and smiled brightly, showing a mouth full of yellow teeth. Fennel is a rare thing, it's said to cure all diseases. There has only been one or two sightings of it in the past few decades. Recently, there was a bundle of fennel growing in the Lu Xiang Pavilion, but it is going to be auctioned and will go to the highest bidder. You can take a look. The old man took the wad of cash and counted it unhurriedly. He was the king of information. This auction was almost completely secret, as everyone wanted to get their hands on the fennel. Hence, the information was suppressed. Got it, thank you. Lon Anran turned to leave. The old man called out, find me the next time you need something. Lon Anran ignored him and left the room. Boss, is the auction going to be costly? The man asked. Money isn't a problem, just get me an invitation card, Lon Anran said coldly. Why don't you let someone here make one? The skinny man asked. The people here only recognize money and we can't make something that looks authentic. It would be troublesome if I were exposed. Besides, I don't have any more money, that blood dot sucking old man. Lon Anran looked at her watch. Time was running out and it would be dawn by the time she returned. Let's split up here. Remember to get me a real invitation card. I'll add on chicken drumsticks when I'm back. With that, she disappeared into the darkness. Boss is really quick and resolute. The skinny man sighed. 